Hello boys and girls, my name is Michael SK and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. So much happened in the last episode. We got a letter from that girl who we uh, ran into in the beginning of the game. Remember when we had that heart attack? Good times. Yeah, so we got a letter from her, but I guess Hisao decided to ignore it and not look back onto the past. Which I really don't completely agree with, but... Whatever. And then we went on a picnic, which got rained out with Emmy and Rin. A lot happened. So, we'll load back in. We are on Famous Last Words. I guess we are... Uh, shit, what are we doing? I want to say that we are heading back to our dorm, but what do I know? Alright. I'm soon in front of my door, but I am intercepted by the sudden appearance of Kenji who appears to be carrying a stack of books. Hey man, give me a hand, would you? Huh? The books are unceremoniously dumped into my arms as Kenji fumbles with his room key. Thanks, you're a lifesaver. If you weren't around, I'd have to keep my door unlocked, and that's just begging for trouble. The perfect opportunity to set up an ambush, or maybe just plant a bomb if they don't want to get their hands too dirty. Probably don't. Afraid they'll break a nail or something if they have to stab me. Women. Kenji is just so fucking dumb. My mind thinks about digesting the verbal torrent that's just been unleashed, but elects to remain uncomfortably in the dark. Uh huh. Anyway, where have you been, man? I could have used some help carrying these back from the library. I knocked on your door, but you weren't there. Oh, sorry. Not really, you appear to think I'm some kind of pack mule. I was out with Emmy and Rin. Well, here we go. Saw that one coming. Kenji staggers back in shock. It looks like I just shot his dog, if he had a dog. The limbless ladies again. What'd you do this time? Well, we wound up at Shanghai. I'm prevented from continuing by a sudden exclamation of despair. The Shanghai! Why the Shanghai? No, 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 man. You can't just go to the damn Shanghai. It's the most dangerous place in the city. A veritable stronghold of their best agents. I know, I've met them. They'll stop at nothing to lull you into a false sense of security and then BAM! He hits the door for emphasis. Wallet's gone. Bus pass? Gone. Identity? Fucking gone, man. Promise me you won't go there again. He seems so vehemently opposed to the idea of the Shanghai that I'm willing to lie a little in order to get to my room. Sure, I won't go there again. Or at least I won't ever tell you that I've gone there again. And this seems to mollify my bespeckled companion. Good, good. Sorry to come on so strong, but I know the danger there too well to let you just wander into the lion's den again. You've got... You got out there... You got out of there alive once, but twice is pushing it. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, I need to get changed and uh, do homework. So I'll see you later. Huh? Oh, sure, whatever. I suddenly remember that I'm still holding his books. You'd better take these. I catch a glimpse of one of the titles. Something about crypto cryptography? What a weirdo. Kenji grabs his precious cargo from me and disappears through his doorway. I open my door and walk in, grateful to get out of my soaking wet clothes. The rain outside picks up and I find myself hoping that Emmy's not out running in this weather. She seems so adamant about doing the run alone. I can't help but wonder if her leg's still bothering her. I try to remember whether or not I've seen her limping at all today, but I can't. Guess I was too caught up in enjoying the day, even if it did rain on us. And as I think back over the events of today, I keep finding myself focusing on my running partner. Her complete refusal to allow the rain to spoil her plans was incredibly cute. But there was something else there too. Sort of an unflappable attitude when it comes to enjoying the day as it comes. I really like that quality. Maybe I need to do a little of that myself. I guess we are done for the day. Damn, dude. As always, getting that drink of water, since that's pretty much my only opportunity. 
and I guess we are waking up right and early in the damn morning. The sound of my alarm brings me out of a dream involving pirates and some other stuff I can't really remember. I'm a little blurry-eyed, and it feels like it takes me longer than usual to get dressed and down to the track. A glance at my watch reveals that I was right, and I am in fact running a little late. The thing is, there is no Emmy. Ooh, that's odd. She should be here. She definitely should be here. I mean, I was late. I guess I wasn't the only one who had trouble getting up this morning. The thought crosses my mind that it never quite stopped raining yesterday. Did she go running away? Or go running anyway? It seems likely. Emmy's a lot of things, but Cautious isn't one of them. She probably figured the rain won't stop, or wouldn't stop, and that's why she was so adamant about running alone. Still, I would have gladly run with her, even if it, if, even if it was in the rain. Heck. If anything, I would have been able to convince her to come in once it got really bad. That would be why she didn't want me to tag along, of course. Even so, I can't help wanting to know where she is. Well, nothing for it. I'd better stretch and run, and hope that Emmy shows up with a grin and an excuse. But I don't think she will. I've got a bad feeling. On my cooldown lap, I am forced to admit that Emmy isn't going to show up. Furthermore, I have no idea where she is. Anxiety gnaws at me, while at the same time, I wonder just why I'm so worried over her. The run helped to take my mind off of it for a little while, but now that I'm finished, I'm back to worrying. It was weird not having her here. Downright unnerving. It suddenly dawns on me that I've been running to hang out with Emmy uh, as much as I've been running to stay healthy. Probably more to be with Emmy now that I think of it. It's one of those things that are completely obvious, yet somehow I never realized it. She really is someone I enjoy being with. As revelations go, it's hardly world-shaking. All the same, I find myself feeling slightly shocked. When did this happen? Well, no time to think about this. Though I want to ponder this new development, I have a greater desire to find out what's happened to Emmy. I'll ask the nurse when I stop in to see him. I've got a bad feeling! Well, you seem to be in good shape, Hisao. That's good to hear. I replace my shirt and stand to leave, as usual. Except instead of leaving, I ask a question. Hey, where's Emmy? She didn't show up this morning. Is she okay? While I try it valiantly to conceal the anxiety in my voice, the nurse's expression suggests that I've failed miserably. You mean she didn't tell you? She's sick in bed. What? Sick? The nurse shrugs. Yeah, she came to my office early this morning with a fever. To be honest, I'm surprised she made it here. She was burning up when she arrived. I believe she planned to let you know, but she asked me to tell you. Oh, shoot. The nurse gives me a sheepish smile that, that seems at least partially sincere. I told her I'd stop by the track to let you know in case she forgot to. Sorry about that. But we don't need to tell Emmy I forgot, right? I return the nurse's smile with a devious one of my own. Oh, of course not. This is fine blackmail material. <laughs> God damn. I'll save it for whenever I need a favor from you. The nurse laughs. I see we're starting to get on his level. Well, I guess I deserve that. But you know, I've got tons of blackmail on you that you're not even aware of. So don't push your luck, okay? My expression earns another laugh from the nurse. I'm just kidding, Isao. But seriously, don't tell Emmy I forgot, okay? Your secret is safe with me. Okay, good. Now, go on. Get out of here. Wait, I've got one more question. Shoot. Is she going to be okay? Oh yeah, definitely. Her fever was high, but it was already starting to go down by the time she came by my office. I'll probably check up on her again at lunch, just to be sure. But I expect she'll be up and about by the evening, no matter what I tell her. Hmm. Maybe I should visit her after class. It takes me a second to realize I've spoken aloud. <laughs> oh, damn, deed. The nurse raises an eyebrow and gives me a searching glance for a moment. Hmm. Well, it might not be a bad idea. You could let me know if she'd taken a turn for the worse, I guess. But no funny business, got it? I know what meds you're on, after all. 
I think that's a threat against my life, but I'm not sure. Either way, I assure the nurse that my intentions are chast and, a and exit the office. Hopefully I said that right. Interesting that the nurse seems or sees me as some sort of potential suitor to Emmy. Even more interesting is how pleased that makes me feel. I need a shower. Yep, gotta get ready for the day. The lunch bell rings, and I find myself disinclined to make my way up to the roof. After all, I'm betting Rin knows where Emmy is, and if that's the case, then I doubt she'd bother going up there. More to the point, I doubt we'd have any sort of sol uh, what the s skin s fuck? I don't know. Conversation, if she did. Whatever that word is, chances are she'd prefer to be alone up there anyway, so I don't accidentally ruin her train of thought or something. Sorry, guys. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm just an, I'm, I'm just, a, I'm, I'm an average reader, so some words have never come across my mind. Unfortunately, I don't really feel like heading to the cafeteria either. Guess I'll go to the library instead. I need a new book to read anyway, having finished my other one yesterday before bed. Maybe I can find more by the same author. I love libraries. They smell like dust and paper and ink. All these stories and facts and opinions crowded together in one place makes the air come alive with potential. I'm not sure how to navigate Yamaku's library yet, having mostly stuck to books I brought with me, so I search for the librarian to ask for help. Hmm. Oh, oh, oh! There she is. Can't believe it. Yuko, looking rather distracted, suddenly emerges from one of the aisles. Uh, excuse me. Oh, can I help you? Actually, I was looking for a book. So am I. Advanced cryptography. We just got it in, and now it's gone missing. I really, really wanted to read that one. Cryptography? Yeah, my, uh, that is this guy I knew. Uh, no, uh, not sure how to describe it. Skip to the end. He got me interested in cryptography, only now the book's gone. And I think it's been stolen. Sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, especially because now I have to search the whole library for it. Even though it's probably not even here. You seem busy. A little. She dashes off down another aisle, and I resign myself to finding my own damn book. Hmm, plenty of choices. Wait a minute. So, did Kenshi steal those books? Did he not actually full-on check them out? Was it because the librarian was a woman? Hmm, so many theories. Oh, come on, how did I get lost? These aren't even printed books. They're all in Braille. I guess that makes sense in a school like this, but honestly, it's a little annoying. I'm sorry, is someone there? Oh, it's Lily! We haven't we haven't heard from Lily in a while. A lilting voice drifts out from behind one of the cubicles set up for research. As I approach, I see that Lily's been reading a book while I've been stomping about the aisles. Oh no, I should be apologizing. I didn't mean to make so much noise. My, is that you, Hisao? I've not heard from you in quite, a, in quite some time. I was beginning to think you'd forgotten all about me. Uh... Sorry. Lily laughs in that refined manner of hers and shakes her head. I'm only teasing you, Hisao. From what I hear, you've been busy. Morning runs with Emmy Ibraza Ibra Fuck! Ibrazaki and lunch on the rooftop, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Guess word gets around pretty quickly. That's and I can coax your- or I can coax poor Hanako on the roof anymore. Or I can't coax poor Hanako on the roof anymore. Man, I really suck. You three are always up there, claiming the spot for yourselves. She chides me gently, though it's pretty clear she's just teasing me again. Still, I feel an odd need to, to apologize. Sorry, we can eat lunch somewhere else if it's a real problem. Oh no, I wouldn't worry about it. Hanako and I have other things to do at lunch, too. Such as read in the library, as you can see. Oh, Hanako's here too? I didn't see her. Lily smiles a bit en enigmatically. Oh, she's around somewhere. But I'm surprised, Isao. You're in here instead of up there. What brings you to the library? Well, Emmy's ill, so there's no lunch on the rooftop to keep me occupied. 
Lily raises an eyebrow at my statement before giving another chuckle. My, poor Rin must feel left out. It's not like that. Uh, but I'm sure it isn't. Emmy tends to be the life of whatever group she's in. It's a shame to hear she's fallen ill. Will she be okay? Somehow I get the feeling that Lily's just inquiring out of politeness, but I respond anyway. The nurse thinks so. I'm going to swing by and see how she's doing after school myself. Another raised eyebrow. My, what a noble gentleman you are, Hisao. It's nothing, really. Just checking up on my friend, after all. Ha, so it's just friends, is it? How disappointing. I blush. Glad that Lily can't see it. Hmm, <laughs> But somehow she knows that I've been flustered by her comment anyway and laughs. I'm sorry, Hisao. I'm teasing you again. Please do tell Emmy that I hope she feels better, won't you? A glance at my watch reveals that I'm nearly out of time to find my book. Of course. Hey, I've got to go find a book before lunch is over, so I'd better get moving. See you later. And that was probably not the best phrase to use. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Lily, however, takes my gaff in stride. Until we meet again, Hisao. I never do find the book I was looking for, but I walk out with something else instead. My stomach growls slightly, letting me know that I should have had something for lunch. Oh well. I'll grab something before I visit Emmy later. It seems as if time has decided to slow down for the express purpose of annoying the hell out of me. That's how I feel in college. Class feels like it drags on for ages. I suspect that my being consumed with worry probably has something to do with it. Blessedly, the bell rings and I dash out of class, drawing a few raised eyebrows, I'm sure. I've spent the majority of the day fretting and unobtrusively as I could. Even though the nurse thinks that Emmy is perfectly okay, I want to see for myself. And we really care for her. It doesn't take long to get to the, do to the girl's dormitory and make my way to Emmy's room. Standing outside her door, I suddenly pause. What if she's resting? I'd hate to wake her up, especially if she's feeling ill. Then again, if she sleeps all day, then it could throw off her sleeping schedule. But rest is important if you're ill, isn't it? I can't decide what to do, so I settle for standing outside the door looking like an idiot. Then I hear Emmy's voice from behind the door. Thanks for your concern, but I'm really okay. Is she talking to me? I'll see you at practice tomorrow. Guess not. Still, clearly she's not asleep, so I can knock without worry. So why this clenched feeling in my gut? I wasn't nervous about dropping by the other day, so why today? Granted, I still haven't really had time to figure out this newfound interest in Emmy's well-being. I don't have a lot of experience in the matter, of course, but certainly this seems to go beyond feelings of mere friendship. But could I take that step? Could I even bring myself to risk what I have right now? Hey, man. YOLO. I mean, it's enough to be friends with her, isn't it? Nah. You must go further. Either way, shouldn't I just open the door and see how she's doing? That's why I came here, right? No. Fuck her. What if she's not dressed yet? Go in. Oh, shit. The image that flashes through my mind causes my heart to skip a beat. Literally. I should probably not ever think those thoughts again. Not if I want to avoid a heart attack. I suddenly realize I'm still standing in the hallway looking like an idiot. Emmy still seems to be in the middle of a conversation, but I knock anyway. Hopefully she won't mind the interruption. You worry to- Come in, the door's unlocked. So it is. I open the door and step in, which is about where my thought process comes to a grinding halt. Ah, oh, it's- it, It's Emmy! I don't know why I- I have no idea why I did that. Emmy is sitting up in bed, her hair t uh, tossed, tossed, tossled, whatever, from a day spent asleep. I think this is the first time I've seen her without those familiar beads in her hair. Her gym shirt and bloomers, obviously hastily pulled on before I came in, are creased and folded from less than proper storage. Damn, dude. She's not wearing her, uh, her legs. Her legs lay bare on the sheets. I've never seen Emmy without prosthetic prosthetics what the fuck before. Yeah, here she is, slender legs terminating in slumps just below her knees. But as odd as the sight is, 
I find myself more captivated by everything north of the waste. It seems that Emmy had finished her conversation with whoever was on the phone with her. Oh, so there weren't people in here. All right. And is now watching my reaction closely out of her one eye, her, her one open eye, as she wipes sleep from the other. Her expression, far from being embarrassed, is rather one of a surprisingly wide yawn, one perhaps appropriate from such a small mouth. A grin that for a... A grin that for a brief moment seems almost flirtatious tugs at the corner of her mouth as she takes the sight of me in. I can do nothing but remain in a state fluctuating between fear, confusion, and not a little bit of lust. Emmy hastily sweeps her hair out of her eyes, fixing it back into place before addressing me. You seem a bit caught off guard, Isao. A wait, how is she standing? A wave of laughter erupts from her, and I find myself grinning and rubbing the back of my head ruefully. Sorry, I've just, uh, never seen someone so disheveled, disheveled, whatever that word is, look so attractive. Never seen you without your legs on. Never seen you look so... What could we say here? Uh, sorry. Emmy giggles again and moves to sit up a little straighter. I'm caught up in the movements of her shirt, very nearly losing myself. I was wondering what your reaction would be. The nurse called and told me that you were going to drop by, you see. And I know you haven't seen me. Well, you know. Without legs. I respond in a tone of casual surprise. Oh, you, you don't have them on? Fuck, dude, I didn't notice. God damn it. This is almost the truth. I very, I very nearly didn't. I'm not trying to suave or anything. Mind you. Somehow I think Emmy would uh, would get offended by that. Instead, she sticks her tongue out at me and chucks a pillow at my head. Ass. I definitely catch the pillow and take careful aim before throwing. Emmy laughs and rolls to one side, dodging my shot. The shifting of her shirt distracting me enough so that the next thrown pillow hits me right between the eyes. Oof. That's the sound I make every time I get hit in the face. I retaliate, of course. And once I've retaliated twice, well, a war was bound to break out sooner or later. And really, when Emmy appears to have far better aim than me, well, it was just a matter of time before I'd have to resort to a suicidal charge. Gotcha. Eep. I'm, I'm not gonna- I'm not gonna scream like a schoolgirl, guys. Come on. What the- Bam, smack, biff. Jesus Christ, what is this, a comic? And once the charge was accomplished, well, of course, I'd have to wrestle the pillows away from her. And with that kind of struggle, of course we'd wind up in this sort of position. Oh, shit, my dudes! Ha! <laughs> Hello, boys and girls! And so I find myself staring down at her from the position, or from my position atop her. She's grinning, eyes sparkling with amusement, maybe a little sweaty now from our tussle. Her chest is heaving up and down, sucking in air. The small bit of my brain that is not currently enraptured by the sight and the smell of her observes that she might, she must still be ill because her stamina is not what it should be. We stay that way for a while. I'm not sure how long because everything seems to go fuzzy. Everything that isn't her anyway. Her eyes meet mine, and deep inside them, I almost catch a glimpse of... What, fear? Longing? Hope? Emmy? What? A, col a cough suddenly convulses her, and I'm almost stumbling in my haste to get off to apologize for everything. Sorry, I shouldn't have. It's fine, it's fine. She gives me a reassuring pat on the shoulder. Damn, dude. So, what brings you here? She's still breathing hard, and that causes her voice to shake slightly. Well, before I was so rudely assaulted by pillows, I came to see how you were doing. Wham. This earns me another shove, and I nearly- f I very nearly fall off her bed. Emmy's eyes sparkle again, and I wonder how I never notice how attractive they are before- They are before, my bad. <clears throat> Consumed with worry, were you? Her tone is mocking, haughty, teasing. She throws her arm across her forehead dramatically, grin still apparent from underneath. Couldn't bear the thought of me laying deathly ill. As we both recover from our brief wrestling match, Emmy appears to fall back on teasing me. 
well, I shouldn't say consumed with worry, but after you didn't show up this morning like a total wuss. Emmy pouts, crossing her arms per potentially, and sticking her lower lip out. It's not my fault. Nurse wouldn't allow it. Sure he wouldn't. I completely believe you. Emmy sticks her tongue out again. You're such a jerk, Isao. So how was your day then, eh? Did you enjoy slacking off? Not really. The phone woke me up pretty early on. The phone? Yeah, the captain of the team called to make sure I was doing okay. Also to let me know it was okay to skip practice. Good, at least she wasn't alone all day. Someone checked up on her. Although, I can't help but think that it should have been me. Oh, that's good. He really keeps an eye on you, huh? Emmy shrugs. It's his job. Part of being the captain means you know where your team members are when they're not in school. Still, I guess it was nice of him to call, huh? Yep, sure was. Emma yawns and shimmies down into a more comfortable position. So how was your day? Kind of a, kind of uneventful, you know? I went ahead and ran by myself and talked with the nurse about how, how you were doing. And I guess we're here for a while. I... Uh, me meander through the day's events, none of which are particularly engrossing. That's when I'm distracted by an arm finding its way across my waist. It seems that Emmy fell asleep while I was talking, so I draw her blanket to cover us. <laughs> oh my god, that's so... <laughs> he looks so, like, uncomfortable and so weirded out. She's rolled over on her side, and now one leg is thrown over my legs, effectively trapping me. Hey, it seems a shame to wake her, but I have things to do. I gently shake her, but in response, she only tightens her arm's grip on me and sighs a little. My resistance to this position crumbles rather quickly. The feeling of her body breathing steadily is both calming and incredibly stimulating at the same time. My breathing cannot decide if it wants to relax or speed up. Relaxation wins, and I find myself putting an arm around Emmy. Nah, dude, don't say you're in love. Because that's what really traps you. I think I'm in love. The words slip out and hang in the air unnoticed. At least I hope they've gone unnoticed. Emmy whimpers weakly through her dream, and her grip suddenly tightens again. For the first time since I've known her, I see tears running down Emmy's face. Oh shit, this is escalating really fast. It feels like my heart is about to break. I instinctively tighten my own grip and stroke her hair in what I hope is a soothing matter. I don't know what I just said. <laughs> Words of comfort, meaningless in this situation, spring to mind. Maybe I should wake her. Are you supposed to wake people having nightmares? I can't for the life of me remember. The decision is taken from me as Emmy suddenly jerks awake with a cry. Oh shit, dude. Oh man, I think I'm getting an idea of what the hell happened to Dad, and what the hell happened to Emmy's legs. Dad! This is... more than I think I want to hear without her knowing. I quickly sit upright and gently shake her shoulder to stir her. Hey, you okay? What a silly question. Huh? What? Hisao? She shakes her head as if to clear it and quickly wipes her eyes. You had a nightmare, I think. Emmy shudders again and glances up at me, a little cautiously, as if unsure whether or not she's actually up. Y yeah I guess so. You want to talk about it? Hmm? A speedy internal debate seems to be going on in her head, which resolves itself with a, with a shrug. Nah, I don't really remember much of it. I'm pretty sure she's lying to me, but somehow I don't think I should press the issue. Emmy shudders again and turns towards me looking a little sheepish. Sorry for falling asleep on you like that. I keep my voice as soothing as I can. Hey, don't worry about it. You've been ill. Yeah, I guess that cold medicine's just made me a little drowsy. I guess so. Emmy does not strike me as the sort of person who'd fall asleep at the drop of a hat. Rin, maybe, but Emmy's far too energetic. Emmy gives a half smile at my response, and then just like that, she's back to her old self. Well, prepare yourself for tomorrow morning, Isao. We'll have to go twice as hard to make up for today. But I went running this morning. No excuse. Oh, fine. I'll be ready for you. Emmy nods, satisfied. Good. 
I take this as my cue to exit. Well, I'd better get going, especially if I want to get enough sleep for tomorrow. I hop off the bed and head for the door. Hey, Hisao? Hmm? I pivot neatly on my heel and face Emmy. She opens her mouth to say something, and then in another, f and then in another first, I see her falter slightly. She closes her mouth and opens it again. Thanks. For dropping by, I mean. You're kind of the first visitor I've had who wasn't Rin. Now that's surprising. I would figure that Emmy would have people dropping by all the time. She's certainly popular enough, or so I thought, always talking to people in the hallways. Emmy hesitates again. And thanks for staying around after I... Well. A look of pain filts or flits across her face. You know. It helped. She brightens back up and waves cheerily at me. See you tomorrow. Yeah, see you later. I'm just about to exit the door when something makes me turn around again. Hey, Emmy. Like, will, will this ever end? Hmm? Anytime you need to talk, let me know, okay? Emmy seems taken aback by this offer. Her grin gets even wider. Sure thing, Hisao. See you in the morning. I exit Emmy's room with my head in a whirl. Should I have even left? Was she really okay? I want to turn around and march back down the hallway, open the door, and tell her... Tell her I love her. Tell her I think she's beautiful. Tell her that I'll be there when she needs me. I want to stay with her, to hold her close as she falls back to sleep. How many nights has she woken up like that, only to find that nobody's there? I want to be that person she can be with when that happens. It's a silly thought, I know. We don't know each other that well, do we? The whole idea, while exhilarating, also makes me feel worry. Worry, perhaps, that I'd overstep my bounds. And now, to add to my troubles, it seems as if Emmy herself already has an interest in someone else. This track captain of hers, who seems so interested in her well-being. True, I've only seen the two of them together a few times, but that doesn't change the fact that they seem better suited to one another. There's really nothing to be done about that. I need to take my mind off of this whole situation. I've got homework to do. Maybe that'll distract me. And to the homework grind we go! And to the end of this episode, we're here! Haha! -ha! Thank you very much for watching this episode of Kadawa Shoujo, guys. What a very eventful one this was. Much more eventful than the last episode, I believe. Like, holy shit, we're getting hit with, like, some deep stuff. But, yeah, if you guys enjoyed this episode, please leave a like, subscribe for more, uh, this and that. And I'll see you guys next time!